All right. Shalom. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. The elect of Yahweh Shai. Once again, it's another video. And it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Bar Shem Rakar Kodash. All glory and uh, praises is due. Especially in the times we're in, which is indeed a blessing, we know this truth, because it will be uh, the stability of our times. And that's pursuant to, uh, I'm quoting the scripture in Isaiah, uh, the book of Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, the sixth verse, where it says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. What does that mean by stability? Meaning, when everybody else is losing their mind, Based upon the judgments the Heavenly Father Yahweh, through His Son Yahweh Shai, is going to bring on the planet Earth, you know, we will be in a stable or a calm state of mind because we know and understand His judgments. You know, we know and understand that the things the Heavenly Father is about to do, we know and understand that it is the judgment of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai especially on this place called America, which is known in the Bible as Babylon the Great. You know, as it is written to quote the scripture, for it is the Lord's purpose to destroy. Uh, that's quoting uh, Jeremiah 51 and 11. Let's go there real quick. Uh, Jeremiah 51 and 11. And we've been given the gift of faith to believe in these scriptures, which makes us special. As Ephesians 2 and 8, for you to believe in these holy scriptures and not only believe in them, but understand them, that's a gift given by the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shai. Okay, so we don't take this gift lightly. I think there's a scripture where it says, uh, to the Apostle Paul said to Timothy, to stir up the gift that is in you. Let me see if I can find that after I read the scripture in Jeremiah 51. Because the Heavenly Father's purpose is to destroy this place called America, to destroy Babylon. Here it is right here. Uh, Jeremiah 51 and 11, this is the prophecy. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. That's those missiles. And you notice as of late, um, the talk of Armageddon, which literally means mountain of troops. The talk of Armageddon has been in the news heavy. Number one, um, uh, Vladimir Putin has a general, and the title of this general is General Armageddon. Okay, you can Google this, General Armageddon. Elder Pasitar was going into that uh, last Saturday at the camp. And that was the first time I heard this, was from Elder Pasitar. He, he mentioned, um, I'm not sure if the... As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me just type in General Armageddon. When I first heard that, I wanted to bust, bust out laughing. But it's but it's true. General Armageddon. Okay, that's his name right there. All right, Commander of Attack on Ukraine. <laughs> there he goes right there. This guy right here. <laughs> General Armageddon. <laughs> now, Armageddon means mountain of troops. Okay? His his name, his real name is Sergei Surovinkin. Surovinkin. Sergei Surovinkin. The general, the general Armageddon. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Uh, commander of attack on Ukraine described as absolutely ruthless with little regard for human life. <laughs> General Armageddon. And then um, uh, even even Joe Biden, Joe Butthead, mentioned about Armageddon. All right, Joe Biden. Joe Biden mentions Armageddon. 
So the spirit of war is in the air, man. All right, the spirit of, and and that's the heavenly father. We're gonna go back to the prophecy. That's the heavenly father. You know, he's stirring up. Hey, one of the titles of the heavenly father is the Lord of Troops, Lord of Sabaoth. Okay, Sabaoth uh, means troops, the Lord of Troops, not the Lord of Sabbath, uh, General Johanna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe Biden mention, uh, mentions uh, Armageddon and you see a a couple of articles pop up Biden's chilling Armageddon warning sharpens the stakes with Putin alright no new intelligence behind Biden Armageddon comment yeah, because Joe Biden made, uh, made his right here. This is from CNN.com. Biden offers stark Armageddon warning on the dangers of Putin's nuclear. I'm just reading the titles. Uh, Pompeo, Biden's Armageddon remarks are terrible risk to Americans. So the spirit of war is in the air, man. And you Israelites, man, you shouldn't be talking about how to get married and uh, how to find the perfect Hebrew Israelite wife. <laughs> you know, it, the Apostle Paul said, they that have wives be as though they had none. Did you never read that scripture? We ain't in that time, man. There's a scripture where it says, redeeming the time for the days of evil. That's the time we're in right now. Redeeming the time means judging the time. You got to know what time you're in. We're in the time of evil, man. We're in the time of of warfare, man. We're in the time of World War III, uh, you know, about to jump off. Now, we know it can't happen un unless um, the prophecy in Revelation 13 and 16 fully comes into play. And that is, uh, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And what is that mark? That's the Chiragma. Some say Chiragma. Some say Karagma. And what is that? That is the C-H-I-P. That will be literally inserted in you. So we know that World War III really can't jump off until that prophecy is fully in place. Okay, because this devil, uh, Revelation 12 and 12 tells us this devil... Uh, it says, woe unto you, the devil coming down with great wrath, knowing that he have but a short time. All right, knowing that he have but, but a short time. So he's going to come with great wrath to make this karagma, to make this sea hip, to make it mandatory, okay, for everyone to take it. And we know this to be a fact because uh, in the book of Psalms, the 64th chapter, it tells you that the Heavenly Father will cause these devils to reveal themselves. Now, we got a major clue from, uh, what's his name, uh, Aaron Russo, which which was a movie producer. He produced the movie Trading Places, starring uh, Eddie Murphy and uh, Dan Aykroyd. Now, Aaron Russo uh, gave an interview before he passed away. Supposedly, he died of cancer before he passed away. Uh, he gave an interview to Alex Jones. Okay, and you can still find this interview on YouTube. And basically, he told Alex Jones uh, what Nick Rockefeller, his friend, had told him. He spoke about how he met the Rockefellers, you know, uh, in particular, Nick Rockefeller, who became a friend of his. Now, Nick Rockefeller is one of the uh, a member of one of the top banking families on the planet Earth, the Rockefeller family. All right. And basically, he told Alex Jones, that's Aaron Russo. He said, look, Nick Rockefeller told him we want everyone chipped. We want everyone sea hipped. All right. So that is one of the goals of the top wicked banking elite, which falls right in line with the prophecy in Revelation 13 and 16, which 
talks about everyone uh, he calls if all both small and great rich and poor to receive a mark so there you go I mean what more proof do you need and everything is, is pointing towards that that they're getting the world ready to to be fitted everyone to be fitted for this uh, uh, CHEP okay so these prophecies are, are jumping off the pages of the Bible man absolutely so going back to what I was talking about Armageddon the spirit of war nuclear missiles and all of that well that's the prophecy right here Jeremiah 51 and 11 make bright the arrows in other words get these missiles ready that's what that means gather the shields the Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes now the place where Russia is, is today once at one time you know south of the land of Russia, you know, Elder Pastor went into it. At one time, that area of land south of Russia was inhabited by the Medes, which the Medes come out the seed of uh, Japheth. Okay? The Medes come out the seed of Japheth. So when it says, raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, that's a dark saying for the so-called Russians today. And you see the mentality of Vladimir Putin. He wants war. He's a warrior type, <clears throat> warrior type prime minister, president, whatever the, whatever title that they they have there. And his uh, general that he selected, Sergei, uh, Sergei, um, let's get his name again, Sorifvikin, was it? Okay, this this guy right here, and he, he looks like a butcher. <laughs> yeah, Sergei Sorovikin. Sur Sur Sergei Sorovikin, the General Armageddon. <laughs> right? <laughs> so that is definitely the prophecy right here. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. What spirit? What spirit are they in, Ark? You know, inside joke. They're in the spirit of war, man. The spirit of destruction. Why is that? Let's read on. For his device, his device is against Babylon, right? His device is against Babylon. So they, they got America in their sights, man. And and that's the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, that's on these guys. Eventually to shoot missiles on this place called America. See, that's the prophecy right there. For his device is against Babylon. The Babylon is talking about is America. America is the modern day Babylon. All right? To destroy it. Because ancient Babylon, uh, ancient Babylon was uh, not totally destroyed. All right? It's known as uh, Iraq today, ancient Babylon. So what Babylon is being discussed here in Jeremiah 51 the modern day Babylon which is America the word Babylon just means confusion all right and that's what America is America is nothing but a, a place of confusion you know back in the uh, uh, 70s I think it was 1970 you had a group by the name of the temptations all right, they were on the charts at that time with the song uh, Ball of Confusion. Now, go check that song out by The Temptations, Ball of Confusion. Pretty much the lyrics still stand to this day, man. The lyrics of that song. And that song was uh, made back in, what, 1969, 1970? Another example is uh, the group Genesis. You know, sometimes I use music pop culture to prove my points um another example is the song uh by genesis the group genesis uh with the the ex-leader of genesis um phil collins uh there was a song they did called the land of confusion okay and they're talking about as a matter of fact that's kind of appropriate because um, the song, The Land of Confusion, if you watch the video with the puppets, 
it was dealing with America and Russia going into World War III, which they thought at that time. That song was came out in the 80s. I think it was 1985 or 84, maybe 86. And uh, in the video, there's the puppet of uh, Ronald Reagan, who was president around that time. And... Um, <clears throat> And uh, uh, Stainhead, what's his name? Uh, Gorbachev. All right, Gorbachev, old Stainhead. If you look at the picture of Gorbachev, you'll you'll see why they call him Stainhead. And they were about to mix it in World War Three. That's in the video. So America's always had that. Ever since the eighties, America's always had that tension with Russia, with the Ruskies. <laughs> So this is the prophecy right here, Jeremiah 51, 11, make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. That's without going into a long explanation. That's the Russians today. That's a dark saying for the Russians today. For his device is against Babylon. So the mentality that these Russians have, and when you throw in, Ukraine in the mix that's like throwing uh, that's like throwing gasoline on a roaring hot fire okay that situation between Ukraine and Russia you know Ukraine is trying to become a part of the EU and the Russians ain't having it that's a that's a powder keg uh, giving off sparks okay a powder keg I'm, I'm just gonna quote the words from uh the song Total Total Eclipse of the Heart by uh, what's it, uh, Bonnie Tyler, which, by the way, she was, she was a Scot. She, you know, she's of uh, Scottish descent. She could have been Jake, you know. That was a very popular song when it came out, Total Eclipse of the Heart, right? There's a lyric in the song where it goes, we're, we're, uh, we're living in a powder keg and giving off sparks. A powder keg giving off sparks is about to blow, man. Blow wide open. Well, you throw in the situation between uh, the Ukraine and Russia. That's a powder keg giving off sparks. That's only going to lead to World War Three, And that's all part of the plans of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, man. So everything is, is, is going right according to plan. Okay. Again, let's read the scripture again. Jeremiah 51 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. That's the Ruskies, man. For his device against is against Babylon to destroy it. So eventually, that's what the Yahweh Yahusha wants to see. The, the total destruction of America. Babylon the Great. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord the vengeance of his temple. The key word there is vengeance. Why? For what they have done to his people, particularly here in America, how his people were treated, us Israelites. You know, the horrific slave trade, all, all, the, all the murders that took place over here of the Lord's people, the Israelites, beginning with the so-called Negro all the way down to so-called Mexican, what they did to the so-called North American Indian, which is the Lord's people, the tribe of Gad. You know, how they stole the land, and then and then and then kicked the uh, so-called North American Indians off their land and put them on reservations. That's a violation of uh, uh, what is that? Uh, the landmarks. Let's get that scripture. So the Heavenly Father saw all that injustice, and He wants to reward this place with total destruction. Okay. As a matter of fact, when the Heavenly Father get through with America, it's going to be a hundred percent desert, and that's pursuant to Isaiah the thirty-fourth chapter. Okay, it is right here. This now, this is the law. This is the book of Deuteronomy twenty-seven and seventeen. The word Deuteronomy means second book of the law. It says, "Curse be he, curse." So it starts off. It starts off. Uh, 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 powerful, okay? Curse be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Now, 
what does that mean? Meaning that's what the so-called white man did when he came over here and stole this land from the so-called North American Indian. Nobody can deny that. All right. Neighbor means brother. The so-called North American Indian was the so-called white man's brother. Why do I say that? Because the so-called white man comes out of Esau. The so-called North American Indian comes out of Jacob. So we were brothers. All right. But this man, he stole the land from his brother. Okay. And that is evidence of the hatred between Esau and Jacob. All right. Esau and Jacob. And, and uh, that's according to Bible prophecy. The Lord said he would put enmity between the seed of the serpent, that's Esau, and the seed of the woman, that's Jacob. Okay? So, again, going back to what the scripture says, Cursed be he that, that removeth his neighbor's landmark. And that's exactly what they did. Esau, when they came over here, they took the land from the so-called North American Indian. You even had something called the Indian Removal Act. Let's take a look at that. So this man is cursed, man. All right. And the Heavenly Father is going to take vengeance because the so-called North American Indian, they're one of the tribes of the nation of Israel, which is the Lord's people. All right. They're known as the tribe of Gad. Okay. That's how those are our brothers, man. The tribe of Gad. Let's talk about the Indian Removal Act. Okay. The Indian Removal Act, which is totally unjust. Or unjust, I should say. Here it is right here. The Indian Removal Act of 1830. These are facts. Okay? Let's read about it. Now, again, this is a violation of Deuteronomy 27 and 17. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say amen. So here we have the Indian Removal Act was signed into law by President Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson was also known as the Indian Killer. Okay, so all, all, it, all of this wickedness, Esau got to pay, man. All right? All of this wickedness, Esau got to pay, which is one of the reasons why America is going to be totally destroyed. Um, Jeremiah 49 and 16. All right, Jeremiah... I'm sorry, Jeremiah 49 and 12. We're going we're, we're gonna to read Jeremiah 49 and 12. But before we do that, let's read about the Indian Removal Act. The Indian Removal Act was signed into law by President Andrew Jackson on May the 28th, 1830, authorizing the president to grant lands west of the Mississippi. Yeah, lands that they had stolen lands that they had stolen okay let's let's emphasize on that all right these they, they didn't get these lands fair and square no those lands were stolen okay authorizing the president to grant lands west of the mississippi in exchange for indian lands within existing state borders okay somehow they're trying to this definition somehow they're trying to make it uh uh, PC, so to speak, but it was theft. All right, the Indian Removal Act was was theft. Okay, let's read this here. In the early 1800s, American demand for Indian nations land increased. <laughs> American demand for Indian nations land increased, and momentum grew to force hold up to force American Indians, which the true nationalities of the tribe of Gad of the nation of Israel to force American Indians further west. Okay, the first major step to re relocate. <laughs> you, see, you see how the Esau's relocate. <laughs> you see how Esau is. Scriptures tell you about him and his words. His words were smoother. Hold up, man. Let, let me get that scripture. His words were smoother. His words. That's how you know this man's the devil. His words are smoother. He's smooth with them words, man. 
Let me type in smoother. I had a feeling it wasn't going to come up. This man is, is smooth with his words. There we go. There we go. There we go. Here's the scripture. Psalm, the book of Psalm 55 and 21. The words of his mouth, the mouth of this devil, was smoother than butter. There's, there's your example. Let's read this again. You just know a so-called white man wrote this shit. What was the reason for the Indian Removal Act? In the early 1800s, American demand for Indian nations land increased. And momentum, because more of these devils were coming over here. So they demanded land, you know? <laughs> these fucking devils. And momentum grew to force American Indians further west. Force, force them by what? By taking their land. That's, that's what it means, force them. Stealing their land, man. Kicking them off the land. Cursed be he who removeth his, his neighbor's landmark. That's what the scriptures say. The first major step to relocate American Indians came when Congress passed. Yeah, there's the key word there. Relocate. You see, his words. Let's go back. They made sure they use, they use the PC word. Relocate. We're going to relocate you. <laughs> that's, his, that's his smooth talk. PC talk. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. See? He's smooth with his words. But war was in his heart. See? Relocate. What's the word that should be there? We're going to steal your land. We're going to kick you off the land. We're going to take your land. And ain't a damn thing you can do about it. We got the army. You don't. You had something called the Trail of Tears. Google that, man. That's another example of relocation. The Trail of Tears. So I'm sick and tired of this fucking devil, man. I really am, man. All right? And if you, you jakes out there, if you had any sense, you'd be sick and tired of him too. But like the scripture said, you destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Psalm 55 and 21. The words of his mouth was smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. See? His words was softer than oil. Yeah, PC. Yet were they drawn swords. Exactly. It, it, perfect example. The first major step to relocate. <laughs> relocate American Indians came when Congress passed. And President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act of May 28th, 1830. Let's call it what, what it was. The Indian Removal Act was straight up and down theft. Theft of the land that was once owned by the so-called North American Indians, okay, when they came over here, all right? And they came over here around the time of uh, uh, 724 BC, okay? We can go into that history. The so-called North American Indians, Indians were part of the Northern Kingdom, the tribe of Gad. And the Northern Kingdom came over here to the Americas around 724 BC, uh, escaping Assyrian captivity. Okay, that account is in is located in the Apocrypha, Second Ezra's the 13th chapter, the 40th verse. Also, um, what is that? Second uh, Kings, the 17th chapter, the 24th verse. So we know who the so-called North, uh, North Americans are. That they are brothers of the tribe of Gad. All right. And then later, the so-called white man came over here and pretty much stole their land. Okay. And this is one of the examples, the, Amer uh, the Indian Removal Act of 1830. So again, that's a violation for those of you that don't know. That's a violation of Deuteronomy 27 and 17. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say amen, meaning so let it be. This is why we go to the prophecy in Jeremiah 51 and 11. This is why the Heavenly Father eventually will destroy this place called America. Like it says here, it is the vengeance of the Lord. Why the vengeance of the Lord? For what Esau did to the Lord's people, which are the Israelites. Example, the tribe of Gad, how they were treated. And don't let me talk about the so-called Negroes who's of the tribe of Judah, how they were treated over here. All right, Yochavayan, 
you know, massacred on the slave plantations. You know, <laughs> he still got to pay, man. Let's read the scripture. Then we're going to go to Jeremiah 49. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. That's why Yahweh Shemi Asha is putting such a heavy spirit of war on the so-called Russians. All right, Vladimir Putin is in the spirit of war. His his general, uh, General Armageddon, he's in the spirit of war. So that's the prophecy. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it. Now you know why. I just gave you an example why. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Because the Lord already said that Esau will pay. Okay, let's read it. Jeremiah 49 and 12. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk it. He's talking about us Israelites. We know the, the so-called North American Indians, we know they drank of the cup, the cup, uh, the curses. Proof of that is their land was stolen. The Indian Removal Act, that was an example of us drinking of the cup. Our brothers, the so-called North American Indians, the tribe of Gad, they drank of that cup. So, like it says here, have assuredly drunken. Now, it's focused on Esau. And at thou, he, that shall altogether go unpunished. So, the Lord is saying, you think you're going to go unpunished, Esau? For all the wickedness that, you, that you've done in the past and present? Thou shalt not go unpunished, see? But thou shalt surely drink of it, right? And an example of that is the destruction that awaits you when Yahweh comes back, because he's going to mainly focus on you, you Edomites. That's Isaiah the 60, 63rd chapter. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? Let's go there real quick. Oh yeah, man, the Heavenly Father got his sights on your America, your cash cow, Esau, your cash cow, that's America. The Heavenly Father got his sights on it to destroy it. Once he destroys America, he would have dealt a major death blow to your kingdom, Esau, Edom. This is Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? See, there's Bozra again. Bozra, uh, if you know the history back during the time of uh, the Edomites when they were in that land, the land of Edom, which is south of the land of Judah, uh, they had capital cities there. Uh, Petra was an example of a capital city in Edom, Petra. You had Bozra, another capital city. Well, the modern day Bozra would be America. America would be the modern day Bozra. I think uh, um, there was a movie back in the 30s, if a brother remembers the name of the movie, the name of the movie um, it was made back in the mid 30s, I think. I forgot the name right now, but they mentioned Bozra in the movie. Okay, Bozra. Um, anyway, the modern day Bozra would be America. Okay, so it says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? Now it's talking about the Lord, Yahweh Shai, when he comes back. To wage war against the Edomites. And that's exactly what he's going to bring. He's going to bring war. Okay, it's going to be Yahweh and the angels. One of those angels being Michael the Archangel. And that's pursuant to Daniel the 12th chapter. Revelation the... Uh, was it the, the, uh, the 12th chapter? Where it speaks about Michael. Also in Daniel the 12th chapter. Michael the Archangel of War is coming with Yahweh Shai to wage war against these Edomites. It's going to be a war of the worlds. Now in that war of the worlds, America is going to be totally destroyed by the missiles and by the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs, which are the chariots of the Lord. Okay, that's pursuant to um, 2 Kings 2 and 12, where Elisha, which was an understudy of Elijah, the prophet Elijah, he saw a so-called UFO and he called it my father, my father, the chariots of the Lord, and the horsemen thereof. So you saw many so-called UFOs. He called it the chariots of the Lord. Elisha did. You go in the book of Psalms, the 104th chapter, it tells you about uh, the heavenly father who maketh the clouds his chariot. Sometimes, uh, sometimes um, uh, 
uh, the word cloud in the Bible means a so-called UFO, a chariot of the Lord. And that was just one example. The book of Psalm 104th chapter around the third verse. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Now in slavery, you had this slave by the name of Wallace Willis who, 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 who uh, made a song called Swing Low Sweet Chariot Coming for the Carry Me Home. Because the slaves, when they were in the, in the fields, they used to see the so-called UFOs and their spirit identified with them, knowing that they are the chariots of the Lord and that one day, and that's heavy, man, one day those so-called UFOs would come to take them home. And that's exactly what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the, the prophecy in the book of First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, where we're going to be joined with the Lord in these so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. And this is kind of what we're reading about here. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? That's how Yahweh is going to invade this planet Earth in those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. And he's going to deliver his elect. That's pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30. And at the same time, he's going to destroy Esau's kingdom for all the wickedness that Esau have done. Case in point, the Indian Removal Act. You ain't going to pay, devil. I mean, you ain't, you ain't going to get away. You're going to pay. That's what I meant to say. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. This is a metaphor for the power of those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save you know there's a scripture in the in the apocrypha to back that up there's a scripture in the apocrypha that speaks about the strangeness of our salvation let's read it i mean when you put these scriptures together they, they're they're immensely powerful man uh what is that wisdom of solomon the fifth chapter around the third verse you know what? Let me start the first verse. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. Who's the righteous man? The Israelites, us Israelites, beginning with the elect. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. Who, who's the ones that afflicted us? All the nations, especially the nation of Edom. I just gave you an example with the Indian Removal Act. Do you know that you have so-called North American Indians, which are of the tribe of Gad to this very day, that are still feeling the effects of the so-called Indian Removal Act? Absolutely, man. That dealt a major blow to the confidence of the so-called North American Indian, man, to have their land stolen like that. They haven't forgotten that shit. Okay, so again, it says the day is coming when the righteous man will stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. The Indian Removal Act was, a, was an example of affliction. Now, there's a scripture where it says, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, let's go to the prophecy in uh, Genesis 49. It speaks about Gad being overcome by troops. Okay? Uh, but then Gad will overcome at the last. It is right here. The book, uh, now, again, this, is, this was a, a future prophecy that our forefather Jacob, all right, our forefather Jacob told us what would happen. Genesis 49 and 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So when you jump down to the 19th verse, that happened, all right, to the so-called North American Indians, which is known as the tribe of Gad. 19th verse, Gad, a troop shall overcome him. That's why you had the Indian Removal Act. Why? Because a troop overcame Gad. What was that troop? The North American Calvary. Custer, all right, uh, Major Reno, uh, General George Armstrong, Custer, guys like that, man. Okay. They came over here and they, and they uh, you know, and they, um, well, their descendants did. And uh, eventually they rose into power and took over this land, took over the land. Stole the land from the so-called North American Indian. Again, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. See, so 
So again, this is an example of how we shall overcome at the last. I'm reading it here. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors when they see it, right? That's these devils, you know, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, when they see us rising up through this knowledge, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And, and not only that, we're putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And we're using the most powerful book on the planet Earth to do it. That's the Holy Scriptures. That is an example of the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai right there, man. Okay? When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. So these devils are afraid, man. And then we're bringing all that skullduggery. We're bringing up all that wickedness and filtering it through the Scriptures. You know they're terrified, man. And then we're telling them that they're going to pay. That the Heavenly Father is against them and he's going to send his son back to destroy their society, destroy their kingdom. <laughs> they, they're, they're not sleeping good at night, man. When they, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed, here's the point, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Yeah, those so-called UFOs that are going to deliver the Lord's elect. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. See? And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they looked for. See? And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit. Yeah, like when you bring up examples of the Indian Removal Act, which, which was totally, uh, totally unjust. That was injustice of the highest level, man. Taking a man, a, a man's land. Taking a man's land. That's a violation of Deuteronomy 27. Thou shalt not remove your neighbor's landmark. Oh, they did that, man. They totally violated that law. So they got to pay. So again, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he? Yeah, us Israelites. Case in point, the tribe of Gad, so-called North American Indian. This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of re reproach. Yeah, they made fun of us, man. One little, two little, three little Indian, four little, five little, six little Indian. You know, calling the, uh, the, the women a squaw, which means a vagina. What other injustices have the so-called white man not done to the so-called North American Indian? You know, the spirit got me... I didn't know I was going to talk about the so-called North American Indian this morning, but the Holy Spirit got me talking about them. Hopefully it's edifying to you brothers out there, particularly you brothers of so-called North American Indian stock, tribe of Gad. Now you know who you are. Those of you that are new to this truth, welcome. You done found out who you are, according to the Holy Spirit. We are the Israelites, man, and the tribe of Gad is very much our brothers, man. Okay? <laughs> You devils are in trouble, man. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. That's what you devils thought. How is he numbered among the children of God and his lot is among the saints? Yeah, guess what? The so-called North American Indians are, are part of the children of God. The children of God are the Israelites. The so-called North American Indians is one of the tribes, one of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And they're about to be vindicated for all this, all the madness that they suffered in the past and are suffering now. And you so-called North American Indians, you got to repent, man. You got to stop calling yourself American Indian, Cherokee, and what else? Cherokee and the various tribes that you call yourself. Your true nationality, you have to be born again. Your true nationality is of the tribe of Gad, of the nation of Israel. That's your true nationality. And stop calling yourselves American Indian, Choctaw, you know, Narragansett. You know, the different names that you put on yourselves. That only causes division. You're, you're one people, man, the tribe of Gad, of the nation of Israel. That's the truth. 
And everything, all, you know, all the wickedness that the so-called white man did to you, he's, he's about to get his, he's about to get his just dessert. Okay, this is what I'm reading. Isaiah 63 and 1, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. This is talking about our Lord when our Lord invades this place called America and destroys it. And at the same time delivers his elect. That's what this is talking about. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Red meaning blood. Because our Lord is going to shed much blood, man. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger. This is exactly what the Lord is going to do when he comes back. He's going to kill a lot of people. And you Edomites are the number one on his list. That's why the scripture starts off with who is this that cometh from Edom. So the, the heavenly father's son, Yahweh Shai, got Edom in his sights. And on one of the reasons is for what they have done to his people. It is, did I not read that scripture? It is the vengeance of the Lord power. Jeremiah 51 11. Well, that lines up with Isaiah 63. Okay. I have trodden the winepress alone and of the people there was none with me for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. There you go. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my remnant. There's the word vengeance again. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. The point is, the Lord have not forgotten what you Edomites have done to his people. All the wickedness that you've done. And he's going to repay you. You might say, well, that was back in 1830. Why are we... Look, there's a scripture where it says, a thousand years to us is as one day to the Lord. All right? <laughs> Think about that. A thousand years to us is as one day to the Lord. As a matter of fact, there's one in Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Let's see if... Yeah, here it is right here. Psalm 90 and 4. For a thousand years in thy sight are as are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. So the point is the Heavenly Father have not forgotten the wickedness that you did back in 1830. I'm just using that as an example. The wickedness that you did back in 1830 in stealing the land from the so-called North American Indian. That's one of many reasons why you got to pay. And the same people responsible for that are back here in the regeneration, the re reincarnation. That's what they don't understand. And you're back here to pay for your wickedness. Uh, let's get the book of Ecclesiastes. The Heavenly Father requireth the past. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the 15th verse. It says, That which have been is now, and that which is to be have already been, and the Heavenly Father requireth that which is past. So don't offer up, well, that was back in 1830. Don't offer that up as a defense. So what? What does that mean? You're still going to have to pay. <laughs> you ain't going to get away. You're going to have to pay, you fucking devils. You low-life fucks. Jeremiah 49 and, and 12. Let's read it again. All right. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. I already explained that. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shall not go unpunished. But thou shalt surely drink of it. There you go, you devils. For I have sworn by myself. This is the Heavenly Father speaking. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Bozra, yeah, your, your, your beloved Bozra, modern day Bozra is America. The land that you stole and you built, you built your filthy kingdom on it. Even had the nerve to set up a so-called justice system. How the hell can you have justice on stolen property, you fucking devils? Oh, man. <laughs> For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord. And I didn't plan to go into this topic, man. I really didn't. I was going to go into another topic. But hey, the Holy Spirit, you say what the Holy Spirit wants you to say. You say what the Holy Spirit wants you to say. <laughs> Inside joke. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Bozra shall become a desolation. So this place is going to be totally destroyed, man. It's the anger of the Lord of hosts for what you've done to his people. He has not forgot. When all that time you would you would 
with the slavery and the stealing of the land, man. You were having a good time, man. Now you motherfuckers want pity, man? <laughs> yeah, it don't work that way, man. You got to pay, man. Man up and take, take, hey, take that ass whooping, man. Man up and take that ass whooping. That's our message to you. For I have sworn by myself, say of the Lord, that Bozrah shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. Yeah, it's going to be turned into a desert. America is going to be turned into a desert, man, when the Lord get through with it. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. <laughs> That's why the Lord got my man Putin and his crazy sidekick general Armageddon. They're waiting, man. They're waiting to. There's a prophecy in Ezekiel where it says, uh, evil thought shall come into their minds to invade this place. As Ezekiel, the 38th chapter around the, the, around the 11th verse. So you, you man, pff, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're so done, you don't even know it, man. Here's the book of uh, Nahum, the first chapter, the, the third verse. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. Oh, yeah. And he about to show his power. When you see those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, when you see them, which you've been seeing them here and there, but there's a day when the skies are going to be covered with them. You're going to witness the power of Yahweh Shem Yahusha. Absolutely. <laughs> the Lord is slow to anger and great in power. And will not at all, will not at all, will not at all acquit the wicked. Yeah, all the wicked acts you did, all the skullduggery. I digged up one from the past. The Indian Removal Act, baby, 1830. By the Indian killer himself, President Andrew Jackson, who's probably back in the reincarnation, the regeneration. They got to pay. You guys got to pay. You got to pay for your wickedness, man. The Lord will not at all acquit the wicked. And that's Esau, Edom. The Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. <laughs> wow, the clouds are the dust of his feet. My goodness. You devils are in trouble, man. Anyway, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'll leave it there. Hopefully you brothers were edified by this video. This video, man, totally took a... a another direction that i wanted to go so what i'll have to do is come back and do the video i wanted to do because the topic that i went into in this video trust me i didn't I, not i didn't want to go into the topic i didn't plan to go into the into that topic but nevertheless the holy spirit wants to get out what it wants to get out all right so with that it's on to the next video